In this video, we're going to be dealing with one of the most important aspects of photography, composition. This is what makes a photo interesting and attractive, but how do you achieve this even in seemingly boring locations? I will explain how to use the principles of symmetry and asymmetry, pre-focus and depth of field to make your photos even more interesting. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and let's begin. All right, pre-focus. Let's start with a tip for the owners of something like a light sensitive lens with a fixed focal length and autofocus. It's not always easy to see the composition of a shot in its final form, and if you are using a lens like the one I described above, there is a small life hack. Do not strain the model with endless requests to stand here or there to see how he or she will look against the background and whether the blur will look nice. You can just pre-focus the shot. How is that? Lower the camera into an approximate point of the model's position Focus on the ground, raise the camera, and voila! Now you can roughly see how the background will look like. With manual lenses, I think it is unnecessary to explain further because the principle is the same with only one difference. You need to turn the focus by hand. And yes, this approach has a number of limitations because not every model will be happy to observe how you walk around with the camera without actually shooting him or her. This one is important depth of the shot. We have already discussed depth in our videos quite a few times, but I couldn't ignore it here because this technique always works flawlessly in cases when the composition seems boring and needs to be improved in some way. The depth of the frame is not always the background blur. I would even say that blur is not the depth of the shot at all. What is more important is dimensions. And by the way, if you want there to be depth in your photo, add one dimension in front of the model. And if this layer is blurred, and based on my observations, the main object is usually located on the second dimension, the depth of the photo will be established. But how to create this foreground dimension, you might ask me and I will answer. Just put anything there, literally anything. Leaves of trees, branches, fences, corners of buildings, dirty or clean glass, flowers, any object in the foreground will be perfect for creating the depth of your shots. Also, I would say that the glass can be good in this case because sometimes it can leave nice reflections or distortion. Prism. Since we are already talking about glass and visual effects, I recommend purchasing a prism on Amazon or AliExpress. Nowadays, there is a huge number of special attachments and filters for camera lenses like Freewell, but even with the distortion of photos being trendy in the past, such an instrument is definitely good to own. This thing can both refract light and distort the image, adding an interesting creative effect even to the most simple photos. Such prisms are usually very small and sometimes you can even snag a filter with the same effect. I wouldn't say that you would use this filter or prism in every photo shoot, but still, having such a simple item in your photographer's inventory is welcomed. But if buying additional stuff is not for you, then photo editors come to the rescue. There are thousands of photo editing apps, but today I will tell you about the one I use. PhotoWorks is a simple to learn and use photo editor that allows you to improve your photos with just a few clicks. Often with the help of artificial intelligence. Yes, it may be difficult to create the effect of a prism, but it's easy to add beautiful highlights. If you didn't level the horizon in the photo or framed it incorrectly, you can easily fix it there. You can add film grain, softness, and adjust the colors of the photo with PhotoWorks. Plus, there are also features of retouching photos, replacing backgrounds, plus a ton of creative filters. So just follow the link in the description and install PhotoWorks on your computer. By the way, using our link, you can get a 60% discount on purchasing the full version. So try PhotoWorks out, maybe it's the app, you were looking for. And we will move on. Leading lines. Lines in a photo can be different. Horizontal, vertical, crosswise. But in my opinion, diagonal, aka leading lines, always look more attractive and interesting. Why? They always draw the viewer's attention to the main object or the center of the composition. Using leading lines in photos is not always easy and sometimes you can't do them at all simply because of your surroundings, but I think you should know about this trick. If you need a quick idea for a photo shoot with leading lines, look at subway stations. The structure of a subway station demonstrates leading lines rather well. Using black and white. Next, I would like to 
take the opportunity to dispel the myth that black and white photos always look dramatic, interesting and mysterious. I often hear from beginners that black and white is a good way to make a photo look more artistic. On social networks, people often post two options with a description like, help me choose what's better, etc. Guys, the mindless use of black and white will not make your shots more interesting. In my opinion, you can argue with me in the comments, black and white makes sense when showing the texture, for example, or the shape or the mood of the scene. Taking black and white only for the sake of taking black and white shots is pointless and dumb. And in my opinion, working with black and white photos is much more difficult because the color palette disappears and it plays a very important role. All in all, do not be fooled by these myths. Think and decide for yourself whether to use black and white or not. Focal length. Focal length is an important factor that affects the perspective in your photographs. Changing the focal length from 18 mm wide angle to 55 mm telephoto can significantly change the distortion of perspective and the size of objects in the photograph. Artists and photographers often use this distortion to create the effect of highlighting a particular element or creating a sense of space between objects. Distortion of focus can be used to highlight certain elements in the scene, making them larger or visually farther away from other elements. Wide angle distortion allows you to enlarge the object and telephoto distortion is used to create the feeling of a shorter distance between objects. Long lenses increase the size of the object but reduce the depth of field while short lenses increase the depth of field and create a wider space between objects in the shot. Symmetry and asymmetry. The use of symmetry and asymmetry patterns can greatly affect affect your photographs. Symmetry in photos is often referred to as when one part of the image corresponds to the other in shape and size, which can give a sense of balance and calmness, making a photo more aesthetically pleasing. Asymmetry, on the other hand, is the opposite. One part of the image does not look like the other. This can add tension to a photo, making it more memorable. Symmetry is not always apparent and easily noticeable, sometimes it can be only partial, it can simply be a mirrored composition, but in any case, it is necessary to develop your vision to spot such symmetries. No matter how boring a location may seem to you, don't forget the only thing that makes your shots better is your own skills and the development of your skills. Thank you for watching, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to download PhotoWorks by the link in the description. See you in the next one.